One, two, three. That was fantastic! Today I figured we'd build one of these. This is just a paint can, but I'm gonna show you how to turn this paint can into something that goes boom and shoots the lid sky high. Now, this is cool and it's full of flames, but it actually models some science concepts as well. With every one of the projects that I bring to YouTube, there's a lot of experimentation. And oftentimes, they don't work out. Sometimes, they backfire, like this one. And sometimes, eventually, we get it right. But, I would never encourage you to try this at home. That's, a, that's, a, that's what I'm talking about. It scared me to death. I love that. It to keep the heart beating. These are my supplies for this build. The big things here, the paint can, and of course, I've got one quarter inch clear tubing and a funnel. Now those are gonna vary depending on what you buy, but I've got a list of everything right on my website at peelscience.com or look down in the description. You can see the process we're going through here. And to get the boom we need, you're gonna need some cornstarch or some lycopodium. Of course, we've got a candle for ignition and a hammer to seal up the top. Well, let's do a little comparison with the cornstarch versus the lycopodium to really show you what's going on inside the can as the air mixes with the fuel and it flares up. First up, regular old cornstarch. All I'm gonna do is take some of the cornstarch and just put it down into the funnel. Cornstarch isn't quite as flammable as the lycopodium. It works well for this demo, and the reason I like it is cornstarch is available anywhere. But if you want to see good flames and get a really good combustion reaction, really good boom, it might be time to switch to lycopodium. Lycopodium is actually a spore from a moss. It's a super fine powder. Now, if you've watched anything on Beale Science, you saw me turn this stuff into a flamethrower. This stuff is fantastic, and it's completely safe. In fact, it's edible. Time for the safety glasses. Woo! Watch this. Okay. All right. I think we just... We just about lost the lab. One more time. Let's find out if this experiment is kid approved. <laughs> that went almost, almost to the moon. These dust explosions can be a serious problem in an industrial setting. Here's a sugar refinery that blew up in 2008, or this grain silo in Kansas. I mean, people have been severely injured or killed because of these kinds of explosions. And our little demonstration is a great way to model everything that's required for a dust explosion to occur. What if we make it go this way? See if we can get the can to shoot in the air. I decided to build a launch pad for this one so that I could get the funnel to stick out of the bottom and get the whole can to launch off of the top. Now, I couldn't have that ugly sticker there, so I had to put one of these ugly stickers instead. Breath. One, two, three. Not tight enough. Got to try again. Like a podium. Here goes nothing. One, two, three. That was fantastic! Way better than I thought. Look at this. Darn near blew the top off of it. The grand finale. I've got all three of them. Odds are it's not gonna work. But you know what? We won't know unless we try. So here we go. Like a podium, going in. They're all on fire. Ooh. One, two, three. <laughs> Well, if you want to learn how to build stuff like this and learn a little bit about science along the way, come on over at BealScience.com or hit that subscribe button or leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and keep on learning. All right. Three, two, two one. one. <laughs> <laughs>